Every year, um, I seem to get more and more requests about uh, people wanting to know how to become a forensic pathologist. Um, apparently, there's some interest in this career. Uh, this year, I've already received dozens, if not hundreds, of requests, uh, usually in the form of emails or direct messages uh, with regards to how to become a forensic pathologist. And I realize that some of these are related to people who have school assignments, who need to uh, find out the information from a person who's an actual forensic. Well, I'm an actual forensic pathologist. I um, am board certified in anatomical pathology, clinical pathology, and forensic pathology. So I have some basis to speak on this. But educationally, how, what does it take? Okay, so first of all, you have to go to college. There's, there's no way out of that. Um, as long as it takes you to get to college, through college rather, uh, if you do it in two years, going every single semester and coming in with a bunch of credits, that's up to you. But generally, college takes about four years. Uh, sometimes uh, it might take five. I've even seen people take six before. Um, you know, that's, that's sort of up to you and if you want to have student loans and things like that. But four years of college, and then, of course, you have to get into medical school. Um, you have to, you know, get recommendations from people. You have to have good grades in college. Uh, usually it's going to definitely be over like a 3.3 or 3.5 grade point average to get into medical school. Um, and you have to take the MCAT exam, which is the medical college admissions test. And you have to do fairly well on it. I'm not going to say how well because um, I took it a long time ago and you had to get a certain number to really get an interview. And now I think they're scoring it differently. So I have no um, recommendations on what kinds of scores and things you should do. And then you apply to medical school, you get into medical school, hopefully, and then medical school usually lasts four years, unless something goes wrong. Uh, but medical school, um, it can be MD, uh, doctor of medicine, or uh, DO, doctor of osteopathic medicine to get through medical school. And then at that point, you have to do a residency. And so that residency is generally four years. Now, it used to be five. You used to have to do an intern year plus four years, but they changed it uh, about 15 years ago, I think. And you could do um, four years of pathology residency without the internship. You go straight into pathology residency. Most people go through and they become certified in what's called anatomical pathology, which is sort of the taking, you know, the organs and diagnosing them. Uh, that also includes autopsy. And then clinical pathology, which is more of the lab-based stuff. So like uh, hematology and microbiology and blood chemistries and things like that. Most people get um, anatomical pathology and clinical pathology, but, uh, but lately there's been more people doing anatomical only. They do like a combined uh, residency where they do anatomical pathology and neuropathology or anatomical pathology and forensic pathology. I personally did APCP because I was going to be a hospital pathologist and was a hospital pathologist for six years before I went into forensics. Now, um, how do you become board certified? Basically, you uh, fill all the requirements of your residency and then you take a test in Tampa, Florida. You have to go to Tampa, Florida and you have to take a test with all the other candidates. And it's a two-day computer test, and um, it's like 700 questions or something. And there's also a microscope portion where you have to diagnose things in the microscope. Um, it's an exhausting test, but most people pass it. I think it has a pretty good pass rate. Um, and, then, and then at that point, once you're board certified in AP and CP, then you do what's called a fellowship in forensic pathology which is a special one-year training in which all you do is forensics. You don't do any other kind of pathology. You just do autopsies every day and you specialize. You learn how to take care of murders. You learn how to take care of suicides and autopsies in children and specialized things like that. So at that point, then you go back to Tampa and you take uh, an examination just on forensics. And if you fulfill all the requirements of your residency program, which is like usually 250 autopsies, I said residency, I meant fellowship. Uh, 250 autopsies in a year usually. You take the exam and pass it, then boom, you're, you're a board certified forensic pathologist. Um, there are currently only 500 
board certified forensic pathologists working in the country right now, and we probably need about 1,500, so anybody who wants to go into it, knock yourself out. There's going to be jobs for a long time to come. Um, as far as, uh, so that, that covers the educational portion. Uh, what other things, well, what would you major in? I always get that question. What should I major in in college? Well, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you want to get into medical school, so you want to major in something that prepares you for taking the MCAT and getting into medical school and feeling like you can do well in science classes. Most people major in things like biology or chemistry. I majored in microbiology. Um, you'll see with my book that's coming out, I talk a lot about microbiology. I'm sort of obsessed with it. You can see lots of micro books on the shelf behind me. Um, so I majored in microbiology before I went to med school. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, I had friends that majored in mathematics. I had friends that majored in English, things like that. So uh, I would say enjoy yourself in college, not too much because you want to get good grades, but um, definitely uh, major kind of in what you feel is best, but also cover your, your pre-med requirements. Um, what else? Um, there are non-academic things that you need to think about with forensics. One is... Can you handle being with dead bodies? Now, it sounds like, you know, on paper, of course, everybody says, yes, I can do it. But then to actually go and, and do an autopsy, sometimes it's a different experience uh, for people who think they want to go into it. They go in and they realize that they really don't like being with dead bodies. Uh, so that you have to consider, um, do I like dead bodies? <laughs> Which sounds a little weird, but... Um, it's more, are you bothered by dead bodies? You know, I mean, because when you do forensics, you see uh, horrible trauma, you see murders, you see children. Um, there are lots of babies and children. You know, if they die, they have to be autopsied. So we have to be able to handle that. Um, you have to be good with your hands because obviously you're doing kind of like surgery except post-mortem. You don't want to cut yourself. Um, you have to have good logic because we are essentially solving cases. We're taking medical information uh, medical records, and then we are uh, putting together with what we find at autopsy and what the police tell us if it's a criminal type case, and we put that all together, and we um, issue a cause and manner of death. So you have to have a logical approach. Um, a sense of smell, if things bother you, smells bother you, um, that could be a problem. It doesn't smell that bad, actually. Um, the smell of decomposition is one thing, but consider that only one out of, say, 20 bodies that you get are going to have some decomposition. Most people are what I call freshly dead. You know, they're dead within the last 24 hours or 48 hours, and they're not bad. I mean, of course, when you open the abdomen, there is, there is an odor because the bowel is filled with bacteria, and uh, it's not the greatest smell in the world. I, fortunately, do not have a great sense of smell, plus I wear a mask, so it's never bothered me. Um... So, and then there, you know, like I said, there's the sights um, and sounds uh, and textures of forensic pathology, which involves uh, things like popping a skull open after you've, you've sawed it open and, and the clipping of ribs with rib shears. And um, sometimes you hear the, the, the ripping of tissue and things like that. So it's not a butcher shop, though. I really want to want to be clear that I really don't like when people um, think that autopsy is sort of like a butcher shop. And I don't like when uh, people practice it in that way where it's a, what I call a chop shop. Um, I think of autopsy as kind of a sacred medical procedure. Um, there will never be a doctor who learns more about you and is more um, intimately related to the procedure. Because, I mean, during an autopsy, obviously, we take the organs out. We, we are inside the body. Um, I mean, it can be a little bit gruesome for people. Again, it's not for everyone. That's why there's only 500 of us. Um, so what else? Um, I'm trying to cover all the possible questions that get asked with, with these uh, surveys. Uh, a lot of times they ask things like, um, what, what is your workday like? Well, my workday is uh, today. Obviously, you can see I'm wearing a suit. I was in court today. So I had to go testify in a murder trial. And that's the only thing I did today. I didn't have any autopsies. So today... I did court. Um, tomorrow I may have three autopsies and I, and I work in the morgue uh, most of the day. And then another day I may have no autopsies or maybe even two days with no autopsies. And then you just work on your reports. So you just usually we sign our reports out, um, you know, in computers and things like that. Uh, pathology reports for autopsy are about 
maybe four to six pages. And if there's a really complex one, somebody with 25 gunshot wounds or something, uh, then you're going to get, you know, like a 10, 15 page autopsy report. So um, my work day, usually I try to begin in the morning. I usually try to start at about eight. And then if I only have one case, I'm done by nine or 9.30 and I'm done for the day. Um, if I have a bunch of cases, I might work from eight or nine until five or six in the afternoon. Um, but autopsy is one of those things that uh, generally not considered emergent procedure. I mean, you're not really saving anyone's life, but cases like children or high profile cases, murders, they usually have to be dealt with within 24 hours. So if I get a call, um, you know, I might do the case. I'm not going to leave in the middle of the night to do the case, but um, you know, you do the case usually in the morning and it also depends on other factors when the police can be there and things like that. Um, and when everybody can be on the same schedule and then you'll do it. I mean, I've done autopsies at 9 PM before. That's just, that's how it is. It's rare, thankfully, but, um, I, I, I haven't done a lot of late autopsies. I usually try to get my work done early in the day and then the rest of the day I have off. So it's really kind of a good schedule. Um, you know, I work alone. I'm the only pathologist in my practice. Um, so I, I kind of just call the shots and decide when I want to work and where I want to work. And it's a good situation. Um, I hope this answers most of the questions that you guys have. I apologize if it doesn't. Um, if it doesn't, I mean, I guess you can post a comment and you can ask and, you know, if I have time, I'll answer it. Uh, but I'm not trying to be rude. I just can't answer hundreds of surveys of the same question. It just, I mean, you know, as you know, I'm trying to get a book finished here in the next couple of weeks and I've got a lot of things going on. So um, uh, it's difficult, uh, you know, years ago when I had less cases, it was easier to kind of take these one by one. But, but right now um, it's, I'm short on time. And so I apologize. So please just ask me any questions and I hope to be able to answer it if it helps you fill out your, your survey or your assignment. And just uh, consider this uh, an, inter an actual interview. And, uh, I apologize. I can't, I can't do it with everybody. It's just, it's just going to be too much. So um, um, if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, thank you.